Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number four from the June 2019 International A Level at Excel M1 it's Mechanics M1 paper. Um, <clears throat> this question here is about a railway truck of mass 500 kilograms. It's being pushed up a straight track by a railway engine of mass 2,000 kilograms. So this question needs to be read very carefully. I think many students might have just not read it carefully and just gone by what they're used to seeing and just kind of imagine that this is being pulled up by this, all right? In fact, here we have the truck is being pushed up by the engine. This is the engine. So here we have the engine and here we have the truck and it's being pushed upwards. So their driving force is in the engine pushing this thing upwards. Okay, so that's very important for us to realize it's not the other way around. This is not the engine pulling up the truck. This is the engine pushing the truck up the, up the track. So reading the question um, is something very important. Many students would look at the diagram and just assume that uh, there's a truck and there's an engine. The engine is pulling the truck up as you might have been used to in questions in the past. So always read the question very carefully. Then it says the track is inclined to a horizontal um, at an angle of theta where the sine of theta is equal to 1 over 14. So we're going to come to that in a minute as well, how that will help us. As shown in figure 3, the engine produces a constant driving force of magnitude 3050 newtons. So this engine is producing a force that is a driving force here of 3050 newtons that's like pushing upwards so that's what's pushing 3050 newtons that's what's pushing up this truck the trunk the truck experiences a constant resistance a constant resistance to motion of 100 newtons and the engine experiences a constant resistance to motion of 200 newtons okay so the truck has a resistance resistance to its motion and so does the engine and the truck the resistance to motion is 100 newtons and for the engine it's 200 newtons i'm just trying to put all these forces here the engine and truck are connected by a coupling which is modeled as a light rod that is parallel to the track now that of course that's very important there's no way that this can be a rope because if it's a rope the truck won't be pushed up like like this okay because the rope is going to become slack if this going you know if this is if this is stationary and this is going upwards it's going to of course you know be slack so this is a rod which is it's rigid a rod is um like um rigid so basically um it can have what's called thrust in in the rod as well as tension so when the engine is pushing up the 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 uh, truck what's happening is the rod is basically keeping them apart from each other so there's going to be a force pushing up the truck and there's going to be a force pushing down on the engine Okay, the effect of the truck, they will be equal and opposite. These are now thrusts. I'll put TRR here for the truck. This is T for the thrust. There's a thrust, okay, which is pushing up the truck, engine pushing up the truck, but of course, because it's, you know, there's going to be like a, uh, the force acting in, in the rod, there's also going to be a force acting which is equal and opposite, pushing down on the engine. Okay, so this is T, this T, it's not tension, it's thrust. If it was a rope and the engine was pulling up the truck, it would be then in tension. So the thrust is, you could say, keeping the engine and the truck apart from each other. Okay, it's keeping them apart from each other. Otherwise, if, if, if that wasn't there, the engine would hit the truck. All right, so it's like, uh, it's rigid. So there's a difference between thrust and tension. It's very important in this question. So the thrust is acting in these directions here. Okay, keeping them apart from each other as the acceleration it's accelerating upwards like this. Okay, now it says, find the acceleration of the system and the magnitude of the force exerted on the truck by the coupling. Okay, so basically, we've got to find the, this, this force, this, this thrust, basically, and we've got to find the acceleration. All right, so we have all the information that we need in this diagram. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make the diagram a bit more neat, but in the space below. Okay, so we have... Let's put in some other forces as well, like, for example, the weight of the truck, the weight of the, well, this is the engine and this is the truck. So the weight of the engine is 2,000 
G newtons and of the truck is 500 G newtons and we have the um, driving force which was 5,000 and 3,050 sorry newtons 3,050 newtons the driving force is accelerating upwards we had the resistance to motion that was 100 newtons and that was 200 newtons 100 on the truck and 200 newtons on the um, engine and we had the thrust we had the thrust which was pushing up the truck and you can say pushing down on the engine keeping them apart from each other okay so those were the forces acting on the system we have also the reaction force but because we already know the resist the resistant force we don't really care about the reaction forces to be honest now and we also know that the sine of theta was equal to 1 over 14. now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the forces in the direction in which this object is moving and it is moving parallel to the plane so I'm going to resolve the weight parallel to the plane. So I'll resolve the weight parallel to the plane. Let me make it a different color so that makes it clear. So resolving the force of this weight parallel to the plane and the weight of this also parallel to the plane. Let me move this 100 newtons label up there. Okay, so now we know that the um, angle over here is theta because of similarity you can see that in some of my previous videos where I've explained that in more detail so that angle is theta in this place here so if I resolve this 200 um, G Newtons this 200 G Newtons if I resolve it in a direction which is parallel to the plane then it's kind of like the opposite of this angle parallel to the plane is opposite or you can say to resolve it into this direction I'm moving away from the angle given so this is going to be this this force here is going to be 2000 G times sine of theta and sorry 200 uh, 2000 G um, sine of theta the weight resolved in this direction this is going to be 500 G times sine of theta okay so that's those are the forces resolved in that direction okay so now um, we have all the forces now acting on the whole system okay all the forces acting on the whole system and we're going to find the acceleration of the system so let's let's look at part one now part one to find the acceleration of the system what we can actually do here is something which will make life easy for us if we just take the system as one whole block okay so I'm going to take it as one whole block so I'm going to take this um, truck and this engine as one block because they're both moving in the same direction in the same straight line with the same acceleration so the acceleration of the whole system will be the same as this individual accelerations that way I can ignore the T in the in, in the ten, the thrust in the in the in the cable because it's all part of the system and I can take the combined weight of both of these which will be 2500 G Newtons therefore resolving that force in this direction is going to give us 2500 g times sine theta and we have the driving force which is acting on the whole system which is 3050 newtons that way and we have the resistance to motion which is combined for two two of them which is 300 newtons so i've combined the resistance of to motion i've combined the component components of the weight and I've taken the thrust as one whole thing, the, sorry, the driving force as one whole thing, and therefore we can ignore the thrust because they're acting in opposite directions inside the system. So, you know, I can now make an equation. I know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. The resultant force, this thing is accelerating, so the resultant force is the forces, if I resolve up the plane, it's the forces acting out, upwards, take away the forces acting downwards, parallel to the plane. So you have 3,050 acting upwards, take away 300, which is the resistance forces, take away 2,500 times G times sine theta, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration. Let me do that in a place where I've got more space to write. So I have 3,050 minus 300, minus 2500 g sine theta equals a mass 
the, the total mass is 2,500 um, 2,500 um, kilograms times the acceleration what we have to find. Now we know, I'll just get rid of this now, that's, that's resolving parallel to the plane, up the plane as the thing is moving upwards. Okay, so that's resolving up the plane. We know that sine theta, as they told us, is equal to 1 over 14. So there's no need for us to work out the value of the angle. We know the value of sine theta, and that's all we need here. So we end up with basically the acceleration being all of this divided by 2,500. So I have 3,050 minus 300 minus 2,500 times g times 1 over 14 divided by 2,500. And that will give me the answer for my acceleration. So I can stick all of that in my calculator and get my answer. So I have 3,050 minus 300 minus 2,500 times 9.8, which is our G, uh, times 1 over 50, 14 times, um, we can say times 1 over 14 divided by 2,500 and that gives us two-fifths so two fifths or 0 0.4 meters per second squared so there's the acceleration of our system okay and the second thing we have to find is the magnitude of the force exerted on the truck by the coupling so what we can do in this second part of the question which I'll continue in the next page okay so now we have the acceleration we know the acceleration is 0 0.4 meters per second squared from part A. Part 1, part 2 says, find the magnitude of the force exerted on the truck by the coupling. And here's a truck. So what we can do here is we can just consider the truck alone. Now we can take the system as in parts because the acceleration of the system is the same. So if I consider just the truck alone, okay, without the engine, then I can just isolate the forces acting on it. So now if I look at just the truck alone, okay, I have its mass is 500 kilograms. So this is, its weight is 500 G Newtons. And the forces acting on it are the thrust, which we have to find. That's the thrust in the rod. Okay, that's what we have to find. We also have the resistance of the um, the resistance force which was 100 newtons we also have the component of the weight acting down which is 500 times g times sine of theta okay there's a theta there so we have those are the only forces acting on the truck okay the engine we could we could have found t also by considering the forces acting on the engine as well and we would find the same t because those t's are the same but it's easy to use the truck, one, because they ask us to find it for the truck. That's one reason, although that's not the main reason. The main reason is there's less forces acting on it because here you have, you know, here you have the driving force and the thrust and the component of the weight and also the, the, the resistance to motion, all of those acting. They will still give us the same value of T if I consider them, but this is less forces, so we'll use this. It's better. So if we consider only the truck, which is accelerating with the same acceleration as the whole system, which is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So we consider just the truck. Okay, if we consider only the truck, then we're going to take up as positive and parallel to the plane. We are, we are resolving the forces now. In this case, the force acting up the plane is T. The force acting down the plane are the other two, which is 100. And also acting down the plane is 500 times G times sine theta, which is 1 over 14. And we know that's equal to the mass. The mass of the truck is 500 times the acceleration, which we know is 0 0.4. This is, this is the resultant force is mass times acceleration. So here we have the resultant force. Here we have the mass times acceleration. Resultant force equals mass times acceleration. So now we're going to find what T is. T is basically going to be all of this, 500 times 0 0.4 plus 100 and plus 500 times 9.8 times 1 over 14. And that will give us the value of T. So let's put that in our calculator. You have 500 times 0 0.4 plus 100 plus 500 times 9.8 times 1 over 14. 
and that gives us 650 newtons and that is our answer for part b part two now i just want to show you how we would get the same answer whether we considered the truck or we considered the engine so this is not actually necessary but i'm just want to make sure and also give you the understanding that it doesn't matter which one we consider the t will be the same because it's the same tension or sorry the same thrust it's not a tension it's a thrust in the rod so the thrust in the rod can also be found using this and in this case if we resolve the forces acting upon the engine we got the upward force is only this 3050 newtons we have 3050 newtons acting upwards and then you got the other forces acting down which include um, the thrust okay which we have to find and also the resistance to motion which is 200 newtons so minus 200 and also the weight component down the down the plane which is 200 times 9.8 times the sine of 1 of sorry the sine of theta which is equal to 1 over 14 okay times 1 over 14 sine of theta okay and that's equal to the mass of the uh, the engine the mass of the engine times its acceleration which is 2000 times 0 0.4 so this time the the mass is 2000 times 0 0.4 and i want to show that using this we'll get the same answer for t so t is going to be equal to if we put t on this side we have 3050 3050 okay you're going to have minus 200 minus 2000 times 9.8 times 1 over 14 and also minus 2000 times 0 0.4 and i hope this also comes out to 650 otherwise we've done something made a mistake somewhere let's have a look that's a 0 0.4 not a 6.4 <clears throat> so we have 3050 minus 200 minus 2000 times 9.8 times 1 over 14 okay and then we're going to have minus minus 2000 times 0 0.4 and what do we get 650 exactly the same answer okay so i've shown that whether we consider um consider the truck so this is considering the truck or we consider the engine we get the same answer for t but of course considering the truck is easier because there's less forces acting on it here you have one two three four including the weight and here we have only one two three thrust and the weight and uh, the, the resistance and the weight Okay, so that's why it's easier to use this method, but both of them will give us the same answer as long as we don't make any silly mistakes anywhere. So that's an, an important question for us to read carefully. Okay, if at first sight it looks like this is pulling that up, no, this is being pushed up. Therefore, we don't have a rope, we have a rod. A rod has thrust and a rod can also have tension. If, if something's pulling something else up with a, with a, tire, a tow rod, it will act like a like a rope in that sense so if this is pulling this okay if this if basically if this is being pulled upwards then there's a force acting this way and then this thing is pulling down and that that's when you have a tension but when you have a situation like this with this is being pushed up and if that rod wasn't there this would go smashing into that then you know this rod is pushing this up and this tension is keeping those two apart from each other you can think of it as pointing outwards because if it wasn't there, they would smash into each other. That's one way you could think about it. So when you have a rod, it's a different situation than when you have a string or a rope. Okay, so there's important for us to understand that. So I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be found in this region over here. Other questions from uh, this topic of, um, I guess this is um, connected particles can be found in the playlist over here. Can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon